Tanisha, I'd like to ask you please to make a statement on any proposals or plans that you may have to end the uh, inhumane provision, direct provision model that is operating under your control and to make a statement on this matter because we have four to 5,000 people living under this system, 1,700 children growing up within it and over 400 children already born uh, in Ireland in the system. So I'd ask you to make a statement on any plans to end direct provision. Thank you, Deputy Tornstedt, to reply. Well, what I would say to you in the first instance, uh, Deputy Smith, is that every effort is being made on a continuous basis to provide a high level of service to persons in the direct provision system. Um, the direct provision system uh, comprises not just full board accommodation, but a range of services, as you know, including health, uh, education and welfare supports. And the principal issue, indeed the principal issue that was identified uh, when the McMahon report did its work, um, was the length of time uh, that people were concerned about. And of course, many of pe the people who are living in direct provision have multiple appeals underway. Uh, at present, the applicants have multiple appeals, and that, of course, has contributed to uh, the, the uh, length of time. But we are committed to reforming the direct provision uh, system, with particular focus on families and children. I want to say that to you. Uh, the previous government established the working group, chaired by Judge McMahon. Just last week, I, I held uh, a meeting with all of the relevant stakeholders and discussed with them the implementation of that report and, and where we're at in relation to it. Um, now, the McMahon report said we had to improve the application process and improve the quality of life in the, uh, in the accommodation through improvements in services. Uh, the 173 recommendations were taken forward, and I do want to say to you that to date a total of 91 of the recommendations out of 173 have been taken forward. 49 are partially implemented and are in progress, and the balance remain under consideration. When I met the various stakeholders working in this area uh, just uh, the week before last, uh, we identified a, a number of areas where further improvements can take place. I'm meeting with the group again in September to continue uh, that work. And I'm meeting with them on a regular basis so that we can progress the reforms. The International uh, Protection Act went through the door last year, and that takes forward 29 of the recommendations, because we do need a, a speedier and more effective system that um, makes sure that people's applications are dealt with quickly and appropriately, and that people are not in the system. Um, many uh, thousands uh, of cases have been heard in the last year, and so the uh, number of people who are in uh, direct provision now over five years has, con uh, uh, has decreased hugely. In fact, the vast majority have now moved to being under three years. So there's been a very substantial change, particularly in relation to the main recommendation that the McMahon report uh, highlighted. And there's also Thank initiatives in relation to standards of accommodation and better uh, accommodation uh, and cooking facilities for families. That is moving ahead in quite a number of the direct provision. Thank centers. you, Thomas. Uh, Deputy Smith. Well, Tanisha, I want to um, just point out to you that last year the UN Human Rights Commission <clears throat> described it as a severe violation of human rights. They're very hard on the system of children living in what they call state-sanctioned poverty. Now, you're aware that there's an allowance of €19.10 Euro a week for each adult in direct provision, and that was set in 1999 and has not changed. I did a, a, an index calculator on inflation, and actually today that figure should be a meagre 27.50, €27.50. But instead of looking after people in direct provision, we're paying out millions to the companies who are making vast profits in providing the accommodation. And yet all of the evidence shows, Tarnish, do you must agree, that there are severe mental health issues with thousands of adults and children living in an environment where they've no control, where adults are not allowed to work or study, where children are not even allowed to bring their mates home to play with them. So could you please comment on those kind of humane issues that are outstanding in uh, dealing with this issue. Thank you, Deputy Tomston. Well, uh, as you know, a decision uh, was taken by the last government uh, to increase, for example, the, uh, the money paid in relation to children, um, not in relation to adults, but in relation to children. Um, there was also uh, the Department of Education, former Minister Janice Sullivan, made the decision about children moving on to third level. It was a small number, but that decision was taken to make, it, to make sure that children in direct provision could access uh, 
uh, third level, uh, third level um, places as well. And there were the other changes which I've spoken about. Um, obviously, as I said to you at the beginning, we do want to uh, provide as a higher level of service to, to persons who are awaiting assessment as we can. Uh, a number of centres have been closed. Um, every effort has been made to improve the standards of accommodation. It's a serious issue. We discussed it again uh, with the NGOs who were in, uh, as I say, last week. Uh, and um, there are child protection policies in place, there's child support policies in place, and uh, we clearly uh, do want to ensure that the Commission uh, uh, meet uh, international human rights standards. I mean, I certainly want to ensure that. I very recently agreed that the Ombudsman for Children, uh, or that the Ombudsman uh, would have a role in relation to direct provision, um, and that's been widely welcomed. That Thank ensures you that you, uh, you have, um, you know, an, out an outside person, and there's also inspections that you have an outside person and now who can also uh, make recommendations uh, to changes that uh, they consider necessary. Thanks, John. Deputy Smith. Uh, Tarnished, I would ask you again to make a comment on some of the reports, and this one is a confidential government report in 2013, <coughs> which stated that the system was not ideal, but it saved us money, and we didn't want to change it in case we attracted other asylum seekers from the UK. So would you not agree that in reality what we're doing is um, reinforcing the whole um, uh, Fortress Europe idea that we want to keep them out as much as possible despite the fact that many of them are fleeing war, famine, dictatorships etc but even when they get here we treat them as less than human, as second class citizens and that there's an outrageous amount of money being made from private companies in, who are in the provision of direct provision, it isn't even a state provision and we're handing over taxpayers money to make vast profits to keep people in what can only be termed as inhumane and psychologically damaging and very damaging on children who grow up in the system uh, and we also have about 400 children born in this country in a complete limbo as to who they are and what they are because they're not entitled to citizenship and they can't go back to where they came from. Thank you Deputy. Tarnished Ireland uh, was very fast to say, and I was uh, to the fore at the Justice and Home Affairs uh, Ministers' meeting when countries were asked uh, to take refugees during the, the very big crisis uh, last year. Um, we immediately agreed to take uh, 4,000 refugees. Uh, that's, uh, that was a sign of our intentions in this area. Under the resettlement, um, our full obligation under resettlement will be met by the end of September when over 500 uh, refugees from camps in Lebanon will have arrived in Ireland. And the relocation programme now is also accelerating with 31 Syrians arriving last night. With 31 Syrians, uh, uh, they are in the emergency centres that we have set up, which is what the recommendation is at European level, that when refugees arrive, arrive in the first place, that they should be in a centre where they get support services, uh, which we have in place. And as I say, every effort is being made now to improve uh, the standard of accommodation in um, in our direct provision system. Uh, I, you, I assume you have visited some of those centres. I mean, certainly I, I've been to varying um, uh, centres and I do think the recommendations in the McMahon report in relation to providing better accommodation for children and families where they have their own cooking facilities, um, we are trying to move to that as Thank quickly you, as possible. Okay, I'm moving on.